Thank you, John Oliver. Today I'm reporting from Canada looking for one of the greatest scams of modern times, the fiduciary advisor. The man who pretends to be a fiduciary advisor. This is the most common investment scam going and it involves about a million industry professionals. My clients aren't my clients. They're really counterparties that I can make money off. You shouldn't be surprised that you're going to end up a culture that's a pretty greed culture that really doesn't do the right thing all the time because you start with a business model that's wrong. The trick began about 30 years ago when there used to be a thing called a stockbroker, someone who would buy and sell investments on a commission, as well as another financial professional defined in the Securities Act of 1935 called a fiduciary advisor. This advisor professional was legally obligated to protect your money with the loyalty of a doctor or a Doberman. John, imagine a world where there were dollar store doctors, people who were not held to the do no harm oath and could make more money from patients by giving them self-serving advice and perhaps medications made at home, house brand medications. That's essentially what we have with about a million fiduciary advisors in North America, John. Laws were created in 1935 after the stock market crash of 29 and the Great Depression to prevent these kinds of predatory practices by bankers and brokers. Well, here it is 2016, John, we're back in the same trouble all over again with the global economy having been brought to near collapse by those same two predators, bankers and brokers. They're sharing hotel rooms together while America pays the bill. The appearance of the fiduciary advisor occurred when stockbrokers learned that they could more easily earn their clients' trust if they called themselves advisor. Note the spelling, John, instead of broker. They learned that clients were more likely to trust advice coming from someone calling themselves an advisor than they would trust a broker. Plus, as you may have noticed, advisor sounds an awful lot like advisor. In what might be the greatest financial deception of the times, more than a million stockbrokers, as well as insurance sellers and mutual fund sellers, have switched their titles to advisor without bothering to tell anyone that they don't have either license, neither an advisor nor an advisor license. And it's worked to fool investors since the late 80s, John. It is only in the last year or two that securities regulators here in Canada have admitted that there is no such word as advisor in our Securities Act. And yet there are 150,000 people running around telling investors to trust me, I am an advisor. Customers of the fiduciary advisor are on their own, dealing with someone who can legally harm the customer and backed by self-regulators who will protect them when they abuse your money. Hence the name fiduciary. In the United States, the term advisor is also not found in the Securities Act. So one million brokers, fund and life insurance sellers can just drop the E in advisor and skirt the laws that the SEC intended to protect investors. None of them will admit to clients that they are just life insurance or other financial product sellers. It's like they're saying, trust me, while at the same time they're lying to you. The only rule the fiduciary advisor must follow is something called suitability, which is a vague and subjective term like drinkability or edibility. It means that the fiduciary advisor can sell you anything that they, with a straight face, can stand up in court and say, Your Honor, I feel that the shitty investments I sold to Mrs. Jones were indeed investments, even though they were shitty and lost all her money. That is never my fault. They were still investments, and therefore they met my suitability obligation. This happens millions of times to millions of people by the fiduciary advisor. Their corporate response each time is simply, So sue me. Well, they have your money to hire lawyers, and you do not and thus they will beat you like a red-headed stepchild. It also helps them a great deal that the average fiduciary advisor is protected by its own self-regulators, non-government lobby people, who've crafted rules saying they are judge and jury of all wrong, removing nearly all protections of U.S. laws from those who deal with a fiduciary advisor. Another way to understand the suitability obligation of the fiduciary advisor is this, John. 
If I were trapped in a coal mine with 12 other guys and the only thing to drink was one bottle of water and the urine of the draft horse, you can bet your ass that some of us would be drinking water laced with horse piss. That's the example of how virtually anything can be judged suitable. Investment dealers and salespeople often dilute their products with a little horse piss in the form of higher fees, commissions, or lower quality investments. Who would place their lives in the hands of a doctor who could make a little more money from his patients if they accepted his second or third best advice? If he could make a secret commission on the side by prescribing you a crappier drug, for example. Welcome to the daily practices of the advisor who only has to sell you product considered suitable, John. Welcome to the douchiary advisor. The fiduciary advisor must take your money seriously, John, while the douchiary advisor can take your money seriously, John.